get away. It's like a fire sale. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. All right, get your CD, get it signed, come to the concert, and now prepare yourself for starting what's going to be an epic Saturday. Ladies and gentlemen, this man is so nice, they named him thrice. <laughs> Put your hands together for David Hayden Jones! <laughs> about David Hayden Jones. You got a, you got a, I, you got a bit of a Jensen Ackles fashion thing going on right now. Oh, yeah. um, I like it. Are you cosplaying? So I am cosplaying once again today. <laughs> Usually I cosplay my own character, Mr. Arthur Ketch, right? <laughs> Thanks. Um, which I think is the height of meta nerddom. It's all right though. But, yeah. since I'm in Colorado, in Denver, and I grew up in the Canadian Rockies, a little bit more in Calgary. I feel like Calgary is the sister city, stampede capital of the world, to Denver. Yeah. I thought I would wear my uh, Dean Winchester cosplay. I love it. Okay, is that all right? Yeah. Pass, pass the mustard test? Yes, we're, we're going to go backstage and pass some more mustard. It's uh, <laughs> so shine. I have <laughs> It's more comfortable oh, than a suit, that's for sure. <laughs> it looks great. You're, you're looked up. Ladies and gentlemen, David Hayden Jones. Thanks, guys. <laughs> so, that's very nice. This is my first Saturday at a Supernatural Convention. Thank you so much. Holy moly. Wow, it goes deep back there. I'm kind of worried that the people in the back were thinking it was Misha Collins and not David Hayden Jones. Because I have dark hair and olive complexion. You know I play Arthur Ketch, right? Just, okay, okay, okay. Right. <laughs> this, well, that's it. People don't like him so much. So I just, uh, the fact that he'd be screaming and being real nice to me uh, is a little bit of a surprise. Um, oh, thank you. I like to do this because I feel like social media kind of skews in a certain direction at times. We're not going to comment on that. Um, how are we feeling about Mr. Ketch? Do we hate him? That was amazing. <laughs> and complicated. <laughs> Which is great. I love that. I win either way. Like, okay, good, all right. We got some hecklers, I like that. Happy hecklers, I appreciate it. We are a democracy here. Uh, who would like to see more catch? Yeah, okay. Well, that's nice. That's, that's nice to know. He's off to him. <laughs> I'll take take that as tacit approval. I don't. I guess enthusiastic consent of Mr. Catch coming back. Um, well, he's off to him catch things. Whatever the heck that means. Uh, all I know is that he's bathing in his own tears and loneliness right now. Uh, I, I know. I feel bad for the guy. He's misunderstood. Uh, listen, if little Arthur, after he's ripping the wings off flies and then torturing bunny rabbits, had only, well, listen, he probably had some nature and nurture stuff going on there. Wow. Right? If he had just had a hug and some good therapy, he would be he would be a nurse. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you, any nurses and caregivers out there, you know that that's my charity at all times, so we just have a round of applause. We just uh, maybe there's maybe there's hope for uh, Arthur Ketch nurse RN. The, the, <laughs> that, that would give him some uh, redemption, right? If he was just like working in an assisted living home, just lifting people in and out of beds, tending to their needs. <laughs> Moving on, shall we take some questions? I'm 
was going to go down a weird Arthur Ketch nurse <laughs> rabbit hole, and I don't think that's what we're here to do. That would be an interesting movie. <laughs> I'd watch that, though. I'd watch that, show. Hi. How are you? Do you have a mic on this? Work him? Test, test? The question mic. I can reiterate the question while they work, work it. Oh, TV only? A TV or movie. I would like... Repeat the question. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. Repeat the question while we're working the mic. She asked me if there's any TV prop, uh, like, or a piece of equipment from any show. I gotta say, like, I was, I was a kid in the 80s. Yeah. I would love Magnum P.I.'s Red <laughs> Ferrari. Ooh. I'd like to see Catch come out of that red for our as a matter of fact. Because, <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, it's just douchey enough, you know, it's just like, and he's in America now, I assume. I have no idea where he is. Don't take the, anything I say up here is head cannon, by the way. Uh, if they do write anything more for Catch, I don't want to spoil that. But yeah, I would, uh, I would kind of like to drive that car around and just, I could let my natural... 70s, 80s Welsh afro kind of just get all salty and dusty. I would totally grow the mustache too, by the way. I got that car. And it would, full beard? I don't know. I feel like I want to grow the non-ironic mustache. Like just lean, lean into the mustache. Can I rock it? I don't know. Anyways, that's the answer. Hi! Oh, hi. Oh, there's, what? Oh, sorry! Gosh, I can't see anything. I feel, I feel like I'm in close encounters right now. Like I've got the. Hey, I, I'm right here, by the way. Hi, hi. I'm David. What's your name? Neil. Hey, Neil. Yeah. So I wanted to know if you got a big backlash from people when you and Mary Winchester got together, and how how you enjoyed the. Working with her in that capacity. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard the euphemism put quite that way before. How do you enjoy working in that capacity? Moving <laughs> on. Um, uh, <laughs> listen, I get so much backlash. Who are you kidding? Like, Catch has done some dastardly things that anger this audience very much. <laughs> I've killed many <laughs> beloved people. Um, yeah, like, I mean, people were like, ew, gross, what? No, John, how could you do that? I think she got more backlash than I did, honestly. I've talked to Sam about it. They were mad at her. <laughs> they were mad. They were like, Mary, what are you doing? He's so gross. <laughs> And he like hangs out with his naked leg outside of the bed sheets. What a douche. Look. For my <laughs> I enjoy an airy leg. I don't even know what that means. Just 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 wind across my calves. Um, I think, I think Sam suffered the brunt of it, but listen, let me tell you about Sam. Uh, she is just one of the sweetest people you're ever going to meet in your life. Good actor, great collaborator. Um, here's a little fun story about that, actually. Because we had a really interesting chat about it as we were prepping for the scene. She was very aware that, you know, like, putting the necklace back on and all that stuff was going to, like, have major yeah, repercussions, like, ripples through the, the fandom. And we had actually talked about, kind of saucily, we were kind of joking around. We we're like, would it be funny at all if one of Ketch's ties, he's untied his wrist from the bed post? <laughs> like kind of, a, kind of a Fifty Shades of Ketch thing kind of <laughs> And we kind of thought about it for a second, and we were like, that's kind of funny. <laughs> And then she's like, no, but then, no, we can't. And, and she was absolutely right, because it was like, it's going to be very tricky with the memory of John and all that sort of stuff. So 
Yeah, we, I mean, we, we had a great time shooting it. Uh, you know, it was, I hoped that the audience saw that there was a sliver of catch, well, guilt and love. I think I, people ask me, did catch love Mary? And in his own weird, sad way, absolutely. Oh, God, that hurt. I love the whole role reversal, too, where she's like, thanks for the scotch and the, what was it, the hard work ethic? What was it, what was the phrase? <laughs> Working that out, but yeah, it was, it was a good time. Hi. 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 Thanks for wearing the shirt, how are you? I'm Davey. Hello. What's your question? How have you grown since joining the Supernatural Fandom? How am I grown? Uh, I've actually shrunk. I'm getting shorter. <laughs> oh my gosh, how have I grown? Um, no one prepares you for this. <laughs> and when I mean this, which is this incredible family that comes along with a great job. So a great character and a great job in show business is a reward enough, um, but to discover, like I had no idea that these cons existed, that the, that the fandom was this robust and kind and charitable and I mean, artistic, and just, you, you go on and on and on and on. All things that I love, by the way. Um, and I'd never been to a convention or had this when I was a little lonely nerd growing up in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. So, so, yay, lonely nerd! <laughs> My people! So, I'm one of you. I mean, I'm like, hi guys. What are you talking about? Want to talk about a cool TV show? I love it. Let's do it. Um, D and D after, awesome. Ah, um, oh, encumbrance. Um, <laughs> Just like to say the word encumbrance for any of my. But honestly, you organically have led me to step so far out of any comfort zone I ever thought I would. For example, doing a charity campaign, designing a t shirt or two, or I mean, listen, I know you're probably charity and t shirt exhausted, but you know, and that's a beautiful thing. How amazing is that, that a community can be like, what are we doing for charity again this week? <laughs> oh, that's amazing though. That's incredible and su such leadership from J2M and, and all that stuff. And then you reflecting back to me, my own creativity and encouraging my creativity to write a song and to dance and to be silly and, and to do all these fun things of communion and having a chat that are just, oh my gosh, that is so value added. I can't even tell you. And when I tell people about what the SPN family is, because again, I'm coming out of this nowhere. I, I was like discovering a new tribe through the Brazilian rainforest. <laughs> Who are these people? They're amazing. They do incredible things. And they're very kind. Um, so yeah, that, that might, you know it's grown? I'll tell you it's grown. My heart, like 10 sizes. That's, that's not a, that's not, a, that's not a panther, that's, that's true. I sing, I sing the praises of these events to anyone who will listen, so thank you. Uh, I've met some incredible people and I hope to continue. Thanks. Thanks, Cherish. Hi there, what's your name? Hi, David. Uh, my name is Sammy. Hi. And, uh, well, first off, I just want to say, I used to be anti-catch, but now I'm pro-catch ever since you helped protect Charlie, so uh, thank you for that. Well, thank you. Little uh, mini redemption switcheroo. Yeah. All right. And my question is, at least for the first time when when I first saw you on TV, I thought that your accent was real, that you actually aren't American. And when I met you for the first time, I was like, oh crap! Like you, you're American. Your voice is so different. So I'm just wondering. Canadian. Can, can you, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. Listen, here's the thing. I actually, I actually have three citizenships technically. I am like a weird global mutt. So, uh, I, I was an American citizen from birth, but born in Canada, so I was naturalized. My dad is Welsh, so I can actually be eligible for my British citizenship as well. So, I don't know what I am. But I'll tell you what though, I don't even know what my natural voice is anymore. Dude. Because like, 
Like, have you heard Jensen say that I, 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 in the, the first season I was staying in my voice a lot, like just to yeah. try to, yeah. And there was a really good reason for that, because, I'll get to your question, I'm sorry, but you just made me think of a thing. No, you're is, okay. Is, uh, I get real folksy when I'm back in Canada. So, like, with the crew, right, like, we're talking about, like, so, yeah, when Catch comes out of uh, the Bentley, right, he's talking to the boys, is like, what's, what's freaking going on there, like? <laughs> I must stay in received pronunciation. I will sound very proper and must speak Queen's English at all times. <laughs> Sorry, to your question. Okay, so my question was, like what's the funniest like fan encounter you've had where people think that you're actually like British, but then when they see you they like well, the, 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 the best one for me was, which, is, which was kind of like really what I was hoping is I could pass, right? Um, and that's why I stayed in it so deeply. I wanted to, because I have a, my accent was based a lot on my very, very English posh Uncle Dave who lives in England. And he's like one of like the last guard of like that old school private or a public educated, uh, very posh English speakers, right? And you wouldn't believe it. He's like a parody of an Englishman. You wouldn't believe him. You'd think like he's doing a bit, right? Like that's him. There was his ass. Yes. No, 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 Did you say anything? Like what? I, I, I think it was affirmative, but who knows? Um, no, it, is I really had most of the British audience tricked. And that was, that was really fun, because that was my first convention, and they were like, what is he saying? What is he talking like? And to a person, it was like, oh, oh, don't lie. You know, English, what are you doing? What, what are you having at? You having a go? And they thought I was doing a bit on stage when I was speaking in my weird, <laughs> like, american canadian ease or whatever hybrid I talk in now. Um, but, uh, yeah, I actually had to work on my neutral North American accent when I got to LA 20 years ago, because I, I had an audition, perhaps, for the most American show you could probably go out for as a new Canadian import into Los Angeles. It was for Walker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, hey, sorry, uh, Walker. Do uh, uh, you need to go out? Because uh, we're just, and she was like, you're Canadian, aren't you? <laughs> yeah? Work on your stories and your outs. So I would actually, in every script since, you know, for the year after, I'd be like, S-O-R-R-Y became S-A-R-I. Sorry. <laughs> and then O-U-T, I would put an A above it so it's out. As opposed to O. <laughs> We're going out, eh? Freaking right. Thanks for your question, everybody. Yeah, you want to go get a two and We'll drink it in the back of my truck later, pal. Freaking right. Let's do it. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I give Cherish full credit for this question. Um, I'm just wondering that. Um, well, I know you said that um, you don't. You're not sure if Catch is coming back, but if he was. What would be your ideal future for the character? My ideal future for the character, personally, which I think would be the most interesting to play, well, obviously, I think he's a useful ally, right? What I love about the show, I've, I've often said that uh, I think this, the colon of the show should be a like, supernatural colon. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, right? So, is what, what's great about this show is it lives in the gray, right? It li lives in these alliances that are sort of like, well, I don't really like you, the lesser of three evils, you know, all that sort of stuff. I, I think Catch could be useful, potentially, in whatever the problem is going to be with Michael inhabiting mm -hmm. Dean, right? Also, I don't know if y'all remember this, but um, listen to me, y'all folks ended up with y'all. <laughs> I'm in Denver, you can get <laughs> See, I don't know why, what happened there. I just got bees floating around up here, folks. There's no brain matter, just a hive of bees randomly shooting. Um, <laughs> uh, what was the hyperbolic pulse generator, though? Remember the egg? Yeah. So, 
I, see, here's the thing, I think Catch not only did he, you know, had the mental leather stuff, but I feel like he's got weapon caches and money and like Swiss bank accounts and like Bitcoin. Like this guy squirrels. I mean, listen, he puts a lockpick up his. And, uh, so this is a guy who's got insurance everywhere, right? He never goes. And he's probably he's got a gun on his ankle. He's you know he's he's ready for bear. Um, so I think he could be useful probably in that uh, quest, you could call it. But I also like the idea that. Potentially, this guy is going to have the old damaged issues come back. Because if you think about it, even with that cheers to Charlie at the end of last season, again, he was feeling useful again with this band of people in the AU, but now he's alone again. I mean, this is like one of the loneliest guys right now. He has nothing anymore. He's got to go make a living. And so I just love this idea that he's in this, like, weird emo, alcoholic state, <laughs> taking the worst jobs, because again, he got his bell rung with Asmodeus. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh. And I love the idea that maybe if he sees some of that Mary Bobby flirtation, I don't know what was happening there. Mm. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Are you looking at my man? As catch, obviously. Oh, pardon me, did I happen to see you shoot some looks at my good friend, Mary? <laughs> Hello, Mary. So there could be some dark side come out of that little uh, jealousy triangle, perhaps? Again, that's just my head cannon. Don't hold me to it, but thank you for that question. Appreciate thank you. It. Hi there. Hi. So my question is, what was the first impression you got from the cast when you met them for the first time? Stellar. <laughs> As well, live. <laughs> why, why would you say that was a lie? <laughs> it's completely the truth. I've never shown up to a more welcoming set. The first scene I shot was the scene out in the, uh, the forest uh, where Catch as the Bentley um, with, the two, with the two guys and so showing the, like, the, you know, the toys are the fun part scene and the hyperbolic pulse generator. And Jared and Jensen, out the gate, and I'm sure you've heard this story a thousand times now, the kindest, the most welcoming gentlemen, collaborators, asking me where I'm from, big bro hugs after the scene was done, and you're just like, oh, that's one of the huge reasons why the show has been on so long. Because the culture in that set and in that crew and in that world is one of the kindest, funnest, full of humor but hard work collaborations you're going to ever meet in the business. And it is a joy to show up to work there, and I am blessed every time I get the show. So that's, that's the truth. So yeah. Thanks for the question. Hi. Um, my question was, what's the hardest part about playing a character like Arthur Ketch? The hardest part about playing Arthur Ketch is um, his, his attitudes about life. Because they're so opposite to mine. Um, <laughs> But in that, there's something really liberating about not caring and just being able to be an a-hole wherever you go. It's kind of delicious, because I try to be a good guy in real life on my journey, but uh, to show up and kind of play this guy who doesn't give a, a poop, um, and is so narcissistic and has this, well, certainly in season 12 before he had his whole bullet in the head adjustment. Um, <laughs> it changes a man. Just ask Adam uh, Fergus. Um, mm -hmm. no. oh, please, please, please. Oh, he does that at every panel we do together. So I'm just, I'm just doing the shorthand for him. Don't worry about him. He's just fine. Uh, I love that man dearly. He's my brother. Um, but uh, it's, it's hard 
the, 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 the carriage of the man and the voice, obviously, and staying in the voice and trying to make it as consistent and believable as possible. Because the thing with accents, you don't want to be thinking about it, and that's why I really just kept drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling. So that the voice is secondary and it just comes out, and so I could just play the scene without thinking about you know, what I'm saying or how I'm saying it. So that was very challenging. Um, and then just doing mean things. <laughs> Doing I mean, really mean, mean things to people is not fun. Like, thank God for Shoshana. Oh, God, she's a wonderful person. Shoshana, Eileen. Cause, oh, man. How much grief did I get for Eileen? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but then you show up with a professional like Shoshana. So fun, so happy. She's like, I know what the deal is. We're make-believe, we're having a good time. I'm serving the story, I'm serving your character, making you a bad guy and hated in the eyes of the audience. And that's the job, right? That's the job. If you're not hating catch a lot. Hey, here's a question for you. More hated, do you think, in general, by applause? Metatron? Yeah, more. Yeah. Or, or would you think Catch is more hated? No. no. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yes. I love this. You can't agree on anything, and that's why the show is genius. <laughs> no, it really is. I mean, you care, you have debates, you're engaged in the show, and it doesn't matter. You don't have to agree on what you like and dislike. But you can do it ethically and kindly and enthusiastically, and that's awesome. That's what art should do, is make you have conversations with each other, which you do every day. So yeah. Yeah, for a cool TV show called Supernatural, man. Woo. Awesome. Hi there, what's your name? Megan. Hi, Megan. Hi. Um, I was wondering if you get nervous when you perform on stages like this, and if so, how do you get through it? Um, I get what I like to call the 10% flutters backstage. Um, I do get nervous, uh, but there are kind of nerves that sort of launch me, that don't, uh, because I did a lot of sketch comedy in theater when I first started my career, so this is actually really like fun for me to come and talk to a live audience again. I love the engagement, I love the conversation. Um, but yeah, like, I get the little, and uh, are you a performer? Is that why you're asking, like, how to deal with nerves? Yeah. Yeah. There's actually a few things. I get. Mo I used to get most nervous before auditions because the stakes are really high. You're selling. You're trying to sell yourself for a job, right? So you're actually out. You know, Billy, being Willie Loan. Like, Would you like to buy some Dave today? <laughs> I could throw in a set of steak knives. I need to get monkey show. Um, but, you know, your diet, how much caffeine, how many carbs you have in your body, gripping the, the floor with your toes, make sure you can feel your feet in the ground, soften your knees, and this is true like anything. You're on like a zen or yoga path, breath, 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 breath. <sighs> Take five deep breaths, ground yourself, relax your shoulders, and go. So. You don't want to lose all the nerves though, because that's kind of like the, kind of what gives you the little spark. I hope that helps. Absolutely, thank you so much. Cheers, good luck to you. Hi there. Hello. How you doing? I'm fine. Good to see you. My question is, we didn't see, uh, get to see Mary and Cash's reunion. How do you think it went? Yeah, Sam and I talked about this. We were kind of concerned because we are like, there was so much happening in that world. And we're like, oh, but aren't the audience is kind of going to want to know or see what that was moment. And they just couldn't fit it on because, you know, the last three episodes, it was just like, it was like the Partridge family of, like, Supernatural. <laughs> Everybody on the bus! <laughs> uh, uh, come on, get happy. <laughs> uh, basically, so this is what Sam told me, and we kind of talked to Andrew a little bit about it, just so we knew what our backstory was. When she sees her sons reunite with her sons, it's assumed off-camera action that they would have told her, brought her up to speed, and she's like, what, Catch is here? Are you, he's alive. Like, they would have just brought her up to speed, filled her in. And then when she sees us at the rebel camp, uh, the encampment, 
Sam was like, it would have just been like, one look to you, mister, you stayed a mm out of my sphere. <laughs> we're soldiers, we're warriors, but you don't even look at me sideways, bro. <laughs> so I was like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. ma <laughs> Please don't shoot me again. Like, so. I definitely think, I mean, I tried to sneak in a few looks, I don't know if they caught it. I mean, we definitely had a few little side glances where I definitely tried to make sure that I was just like looking at Mary sometimes from across a crowded room. <laughs> Nothing, really? <laughs> oh darn. <laughs> but that's, but that's, it would have been very, very much, uh, don't mess with me, bro. Yeah, but just, just stay away. We won't, uh, we won't deal with that old nonsense. Great question, though. Thank you for asking. Hi there. What's your name? Hi, I'm Melissa. Hi, Melissa. So, um, my question is, uh, if you weren't on Supernatural, would Supernatural be a show that you would, like, normally watch, or do you watch other things? I, well, as a matter of fact, when I was, you know, still, like, like kind of a working class actor when I was still, I still had to have like other jobs. My roommate was a huge Supernatural fan. So I would come out and he would be binge watching Supernatural in the morning. I would sit and watch it and be like, oh, this show is like, this is cool. This is really out there. The thing when you're working in Hollywood as an actor, it's really hard to stick with one show because you're constantly reading scripts and going to auditions. So you're kind of getting a taste, you have to kind of get a taste for everything. But like, I felt like, between seasons five through seven, I was pretty well immersed. And then when I got the job, I'd auditioned four times in six years for other roles, just like uh, day player stuff before catch ha happened. So again, it was, it was constantly on my radar. I had friends who had worked on the show. Uh, I wanted to be on the show. Um, didn't get four jobs. <laughs> but it's a great lesson in life. Sometimes you get the job you're supposed to get. So man, like that's the thing, like if I had gotten any one of those like, like loser hunter in the woods attacking giant cockroach people, <laughs> I would have got to do catch. And like catch is a dream come true and I'm so blessed to play it and I freaking love them. So. <laughs> Thanks for your question, I appreciate it. You're welcome, love you. Love you back. Oh, Ollie, well, it's amazing. Hi, Jen. Hi. I am doing Mad Libs with the actors. Yes. <laughs> and you're in, you are given a noun. Would you please give it to us? A noun? Yes, please. Cabbage. <laughs> What? What's this gonna turn into? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Don't ask. Just wait. What? 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 Just wait. Okay. Don't ask questions. No. no. It's gonna be. It's gonna be awesome. These aren't the droids you're looking for. Just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the ride. Do you have a question as well, or just cabbage? That's it. Cabbage. Done. <laughs> okay. You guys are weird enough. Hi. Hi. Um. I wanted to ask Have you got up to any onset shenanigans or pranks? Well, I feel, I realized that sort of me staying in my English accent for all of season 12 was kind of a long game prank. Because they were like, what are you, they saw me in Rome, they were like, what, are you, what? dude, what are you talking about? Um, I haven't been specifically pranked, like, yeah. <laughs> But they mess with me all the time. Don't, don't kid yourself. Like, Jared, you know, when you're shooting a scene, it's called your coverage. So you don't see Jared at all. He's like by the camera and the camera's on you and you're doing your stuff. Uh, I've told this story before. Do you remember when they got all the ingredients to open the portal? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jared also farts a lot. I don't know what <laughs> that. that, that, That's just a given for everyone there. He's like, okay, I'm working with this cloud of methane as well in this scene. That's awesome. <laughs> Although I guess technically methane is odorless and colorless. Let's not get into fart science. Um, but 
You're welcome, Internet. <laughs> Fart Science with Dave Hayden Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Subscribe below. Uh, and now that's going to be it. Uh, <laughs> uh, what was the question? No, I got it. Uh, so there was this thing, you know, like the mortar and pestle, like that big mortar and pestle. And then they had those, what were those fruit that they had to go from Israel? Mm -hmm. So, basically, he's mixing the potion off camera. He's got a long pedestal like this. And two pieces of fruit. <laughs> What's that catch? What's that catch? So, yeah, you know, that's the kind of, you know, sophomore humor that kind of goes on set to try to mess with people. So, yeah, we have a good time. Lots of laughs, but we, we take the work seriously as well. So we, we managed to kind of put a TV show together for you at the end of the week, don't we? Yeah. Thanks for your question. Thank you. Hi. Hi, my name is Emma. My question is, if you had the chance to play another character, like, what would your dream character be? Oh, man. I'm, again, I don't, I don't want to sound like I'm pandering. I'm playing a dream character right now. Uh, that's no joke. Now, I'll give you another one, but... Um, let's get real deep nerd here. I would play any walk-on robot character, extra stormtrooper, Jedi, yeah. in Star Wars. I say used to be my jam. We're not going to get into deep Disney, <laughs> Star Wars nerddom fights, but um, <laughs> leave that. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe later. Um, but yeah, like there's this, there's the, 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 the little boy in me is just like, if I could play in the Star Wars universe, man, I just get <laughs> be a good man. So thanks for your question. It still would be a dream. Hi. Um, my question was, what is an aspect of your character you'd like to go more in-depth with? Oh, man. What is, did you hear on that? What is the aspect of my character that you'd like to go more in-depth with? So <laughs> Where is my fainting couch, madam? <laughs> Who said that? Noted. <laughs> um, well, you're not wrong. Is the thing. <laughs> uh, I would like to explore what a relationship with Mary would be going forward, or jealousy, like we talked about, or what that looks like. I also just want to know his backstory more. I feel like there's just like, yeah. like I feel like the layers are just kind of peeling on this guy. And Eugenie and Brad and like everyone else has is, is, is done such an interesting job with this guy. And like every time I get these scripts, like one of my favorite headcanons was with Alexander Ketch. Like I want to know, okay, I want to know what happened to that tattoo. Did the tattoo have any powers? Was tattoo related to the uh, Rowena spell or did he just have it removed? Was it a practical? Was he branded with it or did he own it? Did he love it? Did he hate it? These are things I talked about with Spade when he directed the episode. I also want to know if there actually was a twin. Yeah. Because check this out, and this is my own head cam, but how cool would this be? If a Kendricks, Alexander is who Arthur had to kill in order to get out of that room. Oh. Talk about some psychology there, huh? You want to talk about a broken man? And if you know twins, we talked about it in this VIP meet and greet, you're killing a piece of yourself. If you were to kill your own identical twin, you're literally destroying a piece of your soul and your consciousness. 
I've had many twins come up and talk to me and be like, you know, that stuff is real and interesting. Um, so yeah, all of that. I'd love to know what he's doing now. Like, what, what is he going to do for a living? Like, how sad is this guy? What's he going to do? Is he going to redeem himself or is he going to just lean back into kind of just sadness and anger? I don't know. What? I think so too, but I don't think they're the great gigs he's used to having, right? He was making good money with Asmodeus. I mean, he might just be scraping by. Does he still have nice suits? I don't know. I'm like you. Maybe he's dressed like this now. Would you accept catch in like American Hundred Year though? <laughs> I love that, again, very complicated <laughs> response. This is why we love this show, right? We have opinions. Hi. Hi, real quick, I was wondering if we can Did expect any more music from you, speaking of the Oh, theme. gosh, you don't want any more music from me, please. Um, what she's referring to is my sort of dare that was created by the um, uh, Supernatural audience in Rome of a single I made, a country single called Making Bacon. Woo! <laughs> exactly. I'm a big fan too, brah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Let's let that one ride out. Let the real singers and musicians do their job. And uh, I will uh, just continue to play around on the sideline being the giant dork that I am. This means... This means... I'm done. This means that the good people of Denver and the surrounding county have had a great experience with Mr. David Lee. Setting up music for me, please. Don't 